All right. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Inside Out Alignment Show, Episode 3. We have with us today Cynthia Lara. Cynthia, how are you doing today? I'm doing very well, thank you. How are you? Good, good. Thanks for joining us. So before we get started, I'm going to ask everybody to smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, and share this video with anybody that you can. So Cynthia, let's get started with a little bit on your background and kind of your origin story. So tell us a little bit about who you are. Yeah, sure. So as you said, my name is Cynthia Lara, and um, I am first and foremost a human being um, here on this earth, literally just learning as I go. Um, I am also a mother. I have two teenagers, um, and that keeps, keeps me very busy. Um, and I am also a um, executive innovation chef. Um, I work in the corporate world uh, along with um, having some private chef and uh, my own catering taco business. Um, and I just love connecting with people and sharing story. I think one of the most important things about us outside of what our titles are, um, we're here specifically on earth to continue to motivate and inspire people because that gives us the inspiration to keep going, right? Um, so sharing my story, but also listening to stories, just collecting missing puzzle pieces and keys to the next door and excitement of what we call life. Awesome. Yeah. And I've known Cynthia for, I think, what, five, six, seven years. And we did meet in our day job lives. And um, ever since we just, we seem to have a, a passion for um, constant exploration, kind of the evolution of ourselves as human beings and why we're on this earth. And I remember when we were sitting down, one of the first times we met, I said, we are going to do something together. I don't know what it looks like, but somehow we are. And so that five years has passed and here we are. So I think this is awesome. Um, yeah. But part of part of what kind of drew us together was um, one of the first things was a passion for health and wellness and becoming uh, constantly a better version of ourselves. So can you frame how that looked for you and maybe bring us back to that conversation we had five years ago? Sure. Yes. Um, so I think a lot when we think of health, we think of our outer body, um, you know, just um, who we are in the physical. And so that's where my journey kind of started, um, you know, outside of what was going innerly, you know, um, I was really focusing on just getting healthy. You know, I was extremely overweight, um, making really poor choices for my health and, you um, there was just this one moment where I went, you know what, I need to start taking care of my health because I am a mom and I would love to see their story more than, you know, just little kids. Like I want to be a part of it. I want to see their triumphs and just life. And so um, I started really taking care of my health. Um, I did get sick. And I think that's where we started connecting because I started really focusing more on my gut and learning about the second brain technically. And so I um, so started just looking at myself on the outside and then learning that, oh my gosh, like I need to start taking care of what I'm putting inside. And then that led the path to really start taking care of my mental health, which led spiritually, emotionally, the, the connection um, of just what it all entails of being actually healthy, not just outside in the physical, but starting within. Yeah. And so we had, we have a common passion for food, um, both of us. And um, you are certainly a much more uh, designated chef than I am. I have a chef in title, but you actually practice it day in and day out. And I can tell you she's extremely talented. Um, and so you can see it's, um, it's easy to be in the world, the culinary world and food, just part of your life. And therefore we just, it just, it's something we consume and we don't think about and And I just appreciated all the candidness you had about, you know, what food meant to you then and what it means to you now and how you made that transition. And as we were talking um, a few weeks ago ahead of this podcast and scheduling this podcast, you know, we talked a lot about presence. So you, you talked a lot about presence and awareness. And so do you want to touch a little bit on kind of what presence means for you and how you incorporate that into, you know, Cynthia 2.0, if you will? Sure. Um, so yeah, just being present, right? Um, I feel like 
there's so much more that I'm even learning today um, from what I've known like a couple years ago or once I started getting kind of like that awareness of just like, what does it mean to actually be present? Um, you know, we are all wired a certain way from birth, you know, and we continue to be wired a certain way depending on our experiences. Specifically, it starts with our parents and then whoever else takes kind of like, um, you know, we have our parents and then there's step parents and then there's uncles and aunts, you know, those caregivers, right? And we look up to these people and they're here to love us and, and, and be there for us. And so um, I, I, I've learned and I'm, I'm in this process of really understanding that wiring and what it does and how it actually has us first react to certain things based off of what we've outside of what we're actually experiencing right now, right? Um, because we've had to kind of like protect our own selves, specifically if there's been certain traumas that have happened in our life. And so, um, you know, I, I started writing, I would say almost like three and a half years ago. And a lot of it had to do with just certain things that I've been aware of my own self, um, certain things that I've done in the past. Um, pain that I've inflicted unintentionally, right? Because there's pain that you can intentionally give someone, but most of the time it's unintentionally just based off of the wiring that, you know, that has been kind of like instilled in us. Yeah. And so um, I realized, I was just like, okay, if I'm able to just focus on what is actually being presented in front of me and not go off of what I'm telling myself, um, that in itself is a gift. You know, being present is a gift because we're able to really understand, A, why we're having this conversation. Um, and, and that's something that I've been kind of more so leaning onto is just like not who is causing this pain, but why is this pain or fear being brought up within, right? And I've learned more so um, that wounded inner child in me that never got certain things that I really wanted um, and kind of transforming it into giving myself that today, looking at little Cynthia differently than how I was actually raised and saying, okay, these are the things that lacked. Well, let me now step in and take care of that. And I think being a mother has drastically given me this huge eye opening of doing differently than what my mother did, though she did the best that she could with what she had and understanding also her story as a young child and seeing where there's correlation in my upbringing. And now I'm able to break those chains with my kids. So if I know that they're needing someone to just listen to them, or if they're needing just someone to just give compassion, then I tell myself, okay, Cynthia, at one point that was you too. And so when I now interact with people, and this is just things that I'm like even more falling deeper into this kind of like healing process of just like, okay, all of these reactions stemmed from little Cynthia being abandoned and now saying, hey, hey, little Cynthia, not me, you know, like, yes, it's me, but going towards and to that source of little Cynthia and saying, hey, like, because I have these two and I'm doing the best I can outside of me, best believe I got you too. Yeah. So this, this, when we were having this conversation years ago, what, what really struck me was having to get out of autopilot. Like we live our lives on autopilot, right? And we tell ourselves stories that have mm -hmm. served us that probably have been along around way too long. So little Cynthia, little Mike told themselves stories when they were seven, eight, nine, 10, 15 years old. Mm -hmm. And the interesting thing is we carry these stories with us to present day, Cynthia and Mike, or name, name, insert name here, thinking those stories still make sense, but yet we're entirely different people. And so I just applaud the fact that you did have that 
you know, that aha moment that created awareness, that created intention. You stepped off the autopilot life, which is, it's hard because autopilot ignorance is bliss, right? Just to, let me just go through the motions and whatever happens, happens. And you intentionally said, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to interrupt this pattern. And you're talking about legacy and you're talking about your two daughters and disrupting that pattern. Um, So let's talk a little bit about grace and self-compassion. So as I, as I talk to my clients, this is a big thing is they, they're hard on themselves, right? They can be kind to their friends. If they're, if they see their friends do something wrong or inappropriate or whatever that is, they express compassion, but heaven forbid they do the same thing. They'll, they'll tear themselves apart. So can you talk about how you brought in, you know, grace and self-compassion as you were going through this process? Sure. And I want to highlight the process is never ending, you know, like there's those aha moments, but certain things in life just keeps happening. Right. So it's how we continue that aha moment to carry on and continue to build that. Right. So it's, it's, it's never ending. Um, but I think a lot of it, and, and this is a lot of this is more recent where I've come to realize, again, going back with the pain that I've carried for X amount of time and the pain that I have inflicted in others and knowing that it wasn't intentional, yet I still did that. And and I too, very much, very easy for me to say that you're loved, you are love, you are light, you are all of these things. And when it comes down to me, I still very much fear that because that was not told to me and that wasn't something that I saw people practice, right? And so um, the compassion is understanding what I've done and why I did it. I did it because I was scared or I've been scared or I was fearing abandonment or fearing of not protected. And so when that energy is there, if I'm picking it up from someone else, it's not necessarily that that's what they're doing to me because I didn't intentionally mean to hurt anybody. It's them feeling that same exact pain, right? And so, uh, because energy attracts and um, if we're picking up something, I'm now in this process of just going, okay, A, why am I feeling this? Is this something that is in me or is this someone else? And if it is someone else, giving them that grace, knowing that their little being is feeling a certain way because they lacked something. And so that's where I'm starting to now correlate how people are first reacting to something and understanding going, okay, that's that's little them. And instead of, I can't believe they're doing this to me, it's more so of just like, what can I do for them? I want to kind of go to a parallel path. And that is, um, you know, a lot of times when people want to reduce weight or they haven't reduced Mm -hmm. weight, there's an element of, I don't deserve this. I'm not worthy of this. And so, you know, this inside out alignment show is about aligning the inside, which is your way of being, right? Your identity Mm -hmm. with behaviors and skills that are aligned. So if I'm the type of person who is disciplined and self-compassionate, then I'm going to do these things externally and I'm going to more likely get to where I want to be. So it took, it must something, when you said you had the aha moment, part of that must also have been, I am worthy, right? I deserve this. I, you know, I talk a lot about abundance in, in, with my clients. So can you just maybe frame you know, self-worth I am worthy of and and how that manifested for you? Yeah. um, Again, a journey, right? Like six months ago, I very much was struggling with um, just putting better things in my body just based off of what I was experiencing Um, because we do correlate what is going on with us um, outside of ourselves. And so I'm a lot of it came and continues to come from of, of just scarcity, I would say. And so understanding that I no longer live in scarcity, 
understanding that that is not part of me because I know the type of person I am and I'm able to create what I want for myself and for my kids. So understanding my power, understanding what I'm able to do for self and not having to gravitate for others to do that for me. Um, Because again, growing up, there was, again, lots of adults that did their best, but no matter what, there was still something lacking. And so, um, you know, even within the past two weeks of just like waking up early, meditating, giving things thankfulness of just like what I have and what I've been able to accomplish. Um, And then, you know, it's like when the chatter just stops and you're able to actually open up your eyes and see what is in front of you, that right there continues to motivate me to give the best for myself. Because if I'm not giving myself what I really need because I'm the only one that knows that. And I think the aha moment of understanding more of my wounded inner child is allowing me to care for myself on a whole other level. I want to cry yeah. because it's, you know, it's that one aha moment that leads to more aha moments. And that for me is that light that continues to shine brighter in order for me to understand the path that I'm actually on and where I want to continue to go. Yeah, and so I think part of this is also um, the stories we tell ourselves, like our self-talk. It's a big, inside out alignment is a lot about self-talk. And so when you've been, if you've grown up in an environment where your self-talk has been negative and uh, lacking, I am not, I don't deserve, therefore everything is lack. It's a fixed mm-hmm. mindset, if you will. We can kind of, you know, move into growth mindset. But mm-hmm. I mean, I, I talk a lot with my clients about the importance of consistent, positive self-talk. Mm-hmm. Um, the subconscious is always listening. I've mm-hmm. said that the subconscious is your dutiful servant. No matter what you tell yourself, your subconscious, it listens. So if you are weak and don't deserve this, and I'm this negative, I'm that negative, subconscious is like, okay, I'll make sure I manifest that in your life, right? Mm-hmm. Inside out alignment, what gets impressed, the way you talk to yourself gets expressed. So if mm-hmm. I'm constantly in this poor me, well, guess what's going to be manifested in front of me? So tell us a little bit about your journey in just that that necessity of positive self-talk on a consistent basis. Mm-hmm. So um, a, a couple of years ago, I kind of uh, started practicing because I, I would literally out loud be like, oh, Cynthia, you're so dumb, yep. you know? And it's like, oh, or oh, you're fat. Yeah. Or all these words that I actually heard from other people, right? Just like, you know, when you're teaching your kid or even yourself something new, there's that practice, right? And so if we're constantly, like you were saying, practicing, you know, words that are not going to actually lift us up, then that's where we're kind of stuck. So um, I remember one day I, I was just like hard on myself and I had this epiphany of just like, what if this was Jamila or, or Bella? what would you do? And I I remember closing my eyes and picturing Jamila and Bella and speaking to them the way I would speak to them. And slowly, and this took time, removing them and inserting myself. I'm now at the point where I don't just see me as adult Cynthia. I still see little Cynthia because that is the core that is actually wanting my attention. I'm out here reacting a certain way because I want people to see who I am, where at the end of the day, little Cynthia just wants to be seen by me. Oh, when I put that together, and again, this is a lot of it's recently, little growth, little steps that have led me to the thinking that I am in now, where I'm just like, oh, got it. You know, I, the way I do speak to myself tremendously impacts how I'm going to move the next or do the next step, you know? And, um, and so 
And so, and it could be anything. It doesn't even have to be your child. It could be your dog, you know, because you look at dogs, there's some that are very, very fearful. And there are others that will just go up to anyone and just love. And right. you look at the owners and depending on how they are, you're like, oh, okay, because energy feeds off of energy. Yeah. And so, you know, whatever it may be, if you want positivity to be out there, I mean, it starts within yourself. What I always tell clients, and I have to remind myself, is that we are innately good. We are made We are made in God's image. We are innately good. Now, the world did what it did, and whatever happened, happened. And maybe that image gets a little distorted, but always coming back to we are worthy of abundance. We are worthy of whatever we desire. God wants abundance in our lives. And so we have to, we have to tell ourselves, I am worthy of not a little abundance, but more than I can manage. I can't even fathom the abundance in my life. This show, I, this show manifested because I just kept telling myself, I deserve more. I deserve more. And I'm going to put in the work, by the way, it just isn't going to, you know, the secret oh. is just, the secret isn't this. The secret is put the energy out. It's like energy attracts, energy attracts like energy. People are going to come into your lives, i.e. Cynthia Lara are going to come into your life and they're going to help build whatever this is you're trying to build. So um, that's awesome. Let me, let me move on to another topic. And, you know, you had said, I'd like to talk a little about this and we're, we're kind of in, it's been a common theme throughout the conversation thus far, and that's inner child healing. So give us the 30,000 foot view on that for you. And as viewers out there that are trying to understand that and becoming a better version of themselves and constantly getting better, tell us about your experience with the inner child healing. Yeah. Um, again, a journey, um, you know, and you know, there's, there's been a lot for me. Um, and I think again, there's, I've, we talk about a uh, perspective that's been kind of like a thing, right? Like our perspective can definitely shift and change depending on where we're at in our minds. And we can come from a victim story, right? Or we can come from responsibility. And I'm, um, and for me, the responsibility comes from actually caring for myself and being tender and kind. Because again, I do hear myself of what I'm saying. And a couple of months ago, I would say maybe six months ago, you know, it's my body was reacting, even though my mind was like, whoa, 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 why are you doing this? Like, you know, X, Y, and Z. And, and I was hard on myself because I, there were still certain steps that I did that I was like, come on, Cynthia. And it was like, okay, wait a minute. You realized that the fact that you're now able to put into words that your body was going one way, even though you knew you had to do something different. Whoa, because I very much can react very quickly. And that's what happens at first, right? Because we're so accustomed to reacting or having to quickly protect self. So all of a sudden my energy shifts from being like very cool to like not cool. And why? Because I've had to protect myself and my heart a certain way that maybe most people would not understand. Yeah. And so um, now it's, I'm, I'm, practicing more so of, and I, and I've shared this, you know, with, with people of just like, you know, you got to check in with yourself and yes, I check in with myself and I still do, but I now ask specific questions. And this has just happened within the past week or so, just like not Cynthia, why are you feeling this? But where is little Cynthia in this situation? Yeah. Because we see certain things happening in our lives that continue to happen it's a different storyline but the feeling is still the same and why is that there's different characters in your story yeah but the feeling is still the same and that's why you know i'm not so much in the mindset of con concentrating on the who caused this it's more of the why and more specific where in this moment are you feeling this when you were younger? Why do you have to feel that you have to protect yourself or fear 
uh, you know, scarcity. And um, you said something so great, abundance is a mindset and it absolutely is, despite of where I'm at or how much I have in my bank account, I know I am able and capable of providing for myself. Yeah. And so this, this reminds me, I've heard it said it takes 20 attaboys to take away one criticism. And that, Mm. that not only means with, you know, for us that have children, uh, but what about ourselves? I mean, we, I, I am constantly, you know, doing Mel Robbins, the high five book. Have you ever read the high five? Like this, this, you think a high five that's cheesy, but what is a high five? Like you give someone a high five when you've done something good or they've done something good and it's affirmation. It's like, it's, it's, you're just, you're, you're putting impressions into your mind. So a high five, like I, I walk in the morning and I high five my shadow and I don't care that people are looking at me, but if I have a thought or I remember I did good, it's like, boom. Cause you're just, it's like, there's one, one out of mm-hmm. two out of boys, three out of boys, out of girls, right? You, you have to, you have to, it's a deficit game. You got to keep building up because that criticism of yourself or others is going to come out and it wipes away all the good like that. So it is a discipline of being kind to yourself, attaboy yourself, attaboy others. In the Fliner house, we high five all the time. And I'm mm-hmm. trying to be more conscious of that. So mm-hmm. um, I just want to call that out. Before we wrap up, remember to subscribe to this channel, smash that like button and share this video with your friends. Cynthia, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on. Super insightful. If people need to reach you, what's the best way to reach you? Email cynthia.lara at divine love 411. Email me. I'm awesome. here. All right. And I'll put that in the, in the uh, post down below. So thanks so much for your time, Cynthia. We'll talk oh, soon. Thank you so much. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. Bye.